Welcome to the second part of the content analysis episode on Walter White's personality disorder. Last time we went over the impairments in Walt's personality. In this episode, we will finish running diagnostics on Walt and arrive at a definitive diagnosis. We will start exactly where we left off, which was seeing whether or not Walt had the pathological personality traits associated with antisocial personality disorder, or APD. Subcriterion B1 states that a person with APD would express the trait of manipulativeness or the frequent use of subterfuge to influence or control others, use of seduction, charm, glibness, or ingratiation to achieve one's ends. Ingratiation is a psychological technique in which a person tries to lead the person they are targeting to believe that they are likable. Ingratiation uses many different tactics. Walter tended to use compliments, instrumental dependency, favor doing, and engaged in any behavior that potentially had the effect of enhancing his likability. Walt has constantly manipulated Jesse using ingratiation for his own personal gain. He complimented Jesse by calling him a fierce blowfish to expand his empire using Jesse's newfound rep as a killer. Walt convinced Jesse to kill Gale because he did him a favor by killing those dealers for him. I saved your life, Jesse. Are you gonna save mine? Walt also told Jesse that he was completely reliant on him to save his life, even though Jesse making a last minute solo attempt to kill Gale would put Jesse in danger. He attempted to convince Jesse to help him kill Gus by reminding him that Gus tried to kill them both and allowed Andrea's brother, Tomas, to be shot. After pushing the blame to Gus, Walt feebly attempts to dissuade Jesse from killing Gus, and then offers to help him kill Gus instead, again as if he is doing Jesse a favor. I don't care. Jesse. Jesse, just get in your car. Just go. Just drive. No. I'm going to do this one way or another, Mr. White. And let me help. Towards the end of the series, he attempted to manipulate Jesse into thinking that it was in his best interest to disappear and start a new life. But Jesse caught on and realized that he was being used to derail Hank's investigation. Although Jesse isn't the only person manipulated, I chose to focus on situations with Jesse because the manipulation is easily seen. Some criteria on B3 states that a person with APD would express the trait of deceitfulness. Walt was deceitful and has been seen being dishonest and fraudulent. He misrepresented who he was to anyone who didn't know he was a drug dealer. He fabricated the story of why he suddenly disappeared during the days that Tuco kidnapped him by claiming that he was in a fugue state. As previously mentioned, Walt also lied to Jesse and made it seem like Gus was the one that poisoned Brock. He also lied to Jesse regarding Mike's death by claiming that Mike was alive and well, when in actuality, Walter had killed him. Some criterion B4 states that a person with APD would express the trait of hostility. Walt was hostile and had frequent angry feelings that can be seen when he interacted with Mike, Jesse, Skyler, Saul Goodman, and Officer Cavanaugh. For example, when Mike insulted Walt's hubristic pride by saying that the act of killing Gus did not make him Gus, this left Walt seething. Walt communicated his hostility non-verbally when he gave Mike an angry look, a look that said, I really want to hurt you. Later, he expressed to Jesse, although indirectly, that he was considering killing Mike for the same reasons Gus killed Victor. Interestingly, hubristic pride has been found to relate to low levels of conscientiousness, as well as higher levels of antisocial behavior. Walt obviously becomes so angry with Mike that he eventually does kill him. Walt also fought with Jesse for not poisoning Gus. He also fought with Saul for bugging his house and listening in on his marital problems. Walt was also passive aggressive towards Skyler when he threw the pizza he bought on the roof of their house. He did this because Skyler refused to let him into their house to talk about the problems they were having at the time. Walt also displayed his anger towards Officer Kavanaugh when the officer refused to give him a pass for his broken windshield. Another example is when Walt decided to insult Jesse after helping the DEA by telling him that he let Jane die, though he could have saved her. Walter also insulted Saul Goodman with the following statement. 
did you actually just use the word ethically in a sentence? You're not Clarence Darrow, Saul. You're a two-bit bus bench lawyer. This was also after Saul had helped Walter take the rice in from Jesse. Subcriterion B5 states that a person with APD would express the trait of risk-taking. Walt was a risk taker. He sold and manufactured drugs. Even though his brother-in-law worked for the DEA, he blew up two cars without regard to the consequences or the safety of others. He ordered the execution of people and participated in killing people himself. By performing criminal acts, he risked losing his family for good and his freedom. Walt was also not concerned with his own limitations, as can be seen when he tried and failed to coerce Saul into participating in his plans to kill Jack and his group. He also refused to admit to Skyler that he and their family were in danger until after Gus directly threatened him. Although I don't think Walter initiated these activities out of boredom, I still think he is a risk taker. Subcriterion B6 states that a person with APD would express the trait of impulsivity. Walt tended to be impulsive and has been seen to have difficulty establishing and following plans. Walt impulsively killed Mike and Gus's drug dealers and did not consider the full extent of the consequences of his actions. Now, Dr. White was no Dr. Strange, but if he had a reasonable sense of foresight, he likely would have survived season five. Likewise, if Walt would have stuck to his plan to cook until he had enough money to pay off his bills, or until the three month contract with Gus expired, he would have survived and the series would have a very different ending. Instead, he decided to keep cooking and agreed on the spot to continue cooking for at least a year for Gus. Walt's impulsiveness can be seen many times after Walt's cancer goes into remission. Like when he tried to begin an affair with Principal Molina, risked getting arrested by trying to attack Ted, attacked Saul in front of Mike, and fought and insulted Jesse when he needed him to take down Gus. Subcriterion B7 states that a person with APD would express the trait of irresponsibility. I do think Walt was somewhat irresponsible. Although he does meet his financial obligations, he does not meet his work obligations, at least not until he became self-employed. He also didn't respect some of the promises that he made. He promised Skyler, after Gus Spring's death, that there would be no more danger. It's, it's, it's what, it's gonna be smooth sailing from here on out? I don't see why not. I keep the work at work, Skyler. Nothing will ever impact you or the kids. You don't know that. You can't make that promise, Walt. Well, yeah, I can promise you that Gus Fring is dead. And he was the threat. He was the danger. I thought you were the danger. And promise to keep Lydia safe. And we all know what happened to her. Let's hear it. Not without a guarantee that once I tell you how to get what you want, I won't be killed anyway. Fine. He promised Mike that there would be no more trouble. I'll cook. I'll cook for free, and there won't be any more trouble, I promise you. Which we all know was a lie. With regards to verbal contractual obligations, he didn't follow through with the agreement he made with Gus or Declan. I think he meets the minimum requirements to be considered irresponsible. In case anyone was wondering about Subcriterion B2, I skipped it because we already covered it in Subcriterion A3 and Walt only needs to display six of the seven pathological personality traits. Now all that's left is to fill out the remaining criteria of the GCPD. Criterion C of the GCPD requires that a personality disturbance be relatively inflexible and pervasive across a broad range of personal and social situations. Because I have shown many different examples throughout Walt's life, it's safe to say that this criterion's requirements have been met. Criterion D of the GCPD requires that a personality disturbance be relatively stable across time, with onsets that can be traced back to at least adolescence or early adulthood. Walt's inferiority complex, arguably the foundation of narcissistic personality disorder, is present in Walt's early adult life. In fact, his early feelings of inferiority was revealed to us through Vince Gilligan himself when he gave us the reason why Walter left Gretchen. He stated, I think it was a kind of situation where he didn't realize the girl he was about to marry was so very wealthy and came from such a prominent family and it kind of blew his mind and made him feel inferior and he overreacted. We don't have much else about Walt's early adulthood that we can apply other than what I just mentioned. So we'll have to assume that he still behaved in ways that fill out the criteria mentioned 
albeit in a less severe way. It's also important to note that personality disorders can have a late onset. In other words, people like Walter can develop a personality disorder, like APD, during the middle age portion of their lives. Indeed, in an international Delphi study, experts in personality disorders and older adults reached a consensus on the concept of late onset personality disorders. The general opinion was that old age and life events that often accompany the stage of life often contribute to the expression of a late onset PD. Criterion E requires that the personality disturbance is not better explained by another mental disorder. As far as we know, Walt was not diagnosed with any other mental disorder. Criterion F requires that the personality disturbance is not solely attributable to the physiological effects of a substance, i.e. a drug of abuse or a medication, or another medical condition. Here's where we hit a bit of an obstacle. As you might have noticed, I tried to choose events that took place either before Breaking Bad or between the time Walter's cancer enters remission and his cancer possibly returning. This was to minimize the chance that his terminal cancer would influence his behavior. It's doubtful that the cancer in his lungs would be a direct cause of his actions, since his behavior only seemed to get worse when the cancer was in remission. As far as what science says, unless the cancer is in his brain, there wouldn't be a significant behavioral change. Additionally, a patient's change in personality as a result of being given a terminal diagnosis would vary on a case-by-case -case basis. Some of the side effects of chemotherapy include fatigue, cognitive dysfunction, and peripheral neuropathy. Given Walter's work ethic in the lab, ability to outmaneuver most of his enemies throughout the series, and the lack of any evidence of any tingling, pain, weakness, or numbness in his hands and feet, it is unlikely that the drugs used in chemotherapy played a role in his behavior. We also have verbal confirmation from Walt about how he was feeling during times where chemotherapy would have influenced his behavior. For example, during his conversation with Jesse. I'd been to my oncologist, Jesse, just last week. I'm still in remission. I'm healthy. Walt also confirms that he is fine during his conversation with Gus. Your medical condition, has it grown worse? Not that I know of, no. Is there a ringing in your ears? Are you seeing bright lights or hearing voices? I'm quite well, thank you. Considering all this information, we can safely deduce that Walt satisfies Criterion F. Criterion G requires that the personality disturbance is not better understood as normal for an individual's developmental stage or socio-cultural environment. Again, we have come to another obstacle. We can't be 100% certain that Walt's personality disorders developed during his 50s due to the struggle associated with differentiating between the functional impairments connected to personality and those corresponding to physiological and environmental facets of aging. In conclusion, I believe Walt had antisocial personality disorder and narcissistic personality disorder due to the behavior he displayed. Thanks for watching Content Analysis. If you like this content and would like to see more, feel free to like, subscribe, and click that bell icon so that you can be notified whenever I upload. Also, do not hesitate to leave your thoughts on Walt's possible personality disorder in the comment section below.